Hey everybody, how's it going? This is Danny, the Wicked Awesome Garden, coming at you from the Wicked Awesome Garden and the Tomato Forest. <laughs> this is that bed where I spaced things a bit too close together, 22 plants in a 4 by 10 space. Um, I'm going to apologize if the traffic noise is a little bit louder than usual. I'm filming um, much closer to the road, but it is what it is. Between a heat wave of nearly 100 degree temperatures, I know some of you in the south that's like, ha, ah, 100 degrees, but 100 degrees and 70 to 80% humidity, my asthma just wasn't having it. Then days of pouring rain, and then I was sick and stuck literally in bed for four or five days, and then days of pouring rain again. I'm not gonna have to water for a bit. Um, <laughs> These have had plenty um, and it's supposed to be overcast, if not um, rainy for still for a few days. So I'm taking advantage of this break in the rain to finally get out and do what is so overdue, beginning to stake up and prune these tomatoes because they are falling over everywhere. So let me take you on a quick little look through and then I'll show you what I mean. This Juliet tomato is flat on the ground. It's just sprawling everywhere. It's a determinant, so I'm not really gonna prune it very much, but I do need to stake it and get it off the ground. Um, this cherry bomb is insane. It's growing everywhere. Like, I can't even tell one tomato from another at the moment, and that's not good. That is a breeding ground for blight and other diseases because there isn't very much airflow here. And as you can see, it's already, oh, no, that's not, that is not something. <gasps> the rabbits put a bunny nest in my tomatoes. I was gonna say that looks like blight, but no, that's just a whole bunch of soil kicked up and things disturbed because there's a bunny nest there. Well, I'm not gonna mess with that too much, but I am gonna get these tomatoes staked. As you can see, there's this big hole in the center because this one has fallen over. Yeah, so lots of work needed in here. I am not going to get it all done today. This is gonna be piecemeal, little by little, because I have to leave for work in about half an hour. So I can get a few of these staked, get a few of these trimmed, and we'll go from there. So what I have to work with are these five foot tomato steaks. I've um, got them off of Amazon pretty cheap. Um, that's really all I've got to deal with this year because furring strips, which is what I would prefer to use, are just so obscenely expensive this year with the cost of wood. And these little twist ties, I like to use um, stretchy tape so that it you know, will move with the tomatoes a little bit more. But uh, again, cost is an issue this year. And these were gifted to me, so I'm gonna use these little tomato twist ties. So I'm gonna push these in the ground near the plant, not right up next to it, but as far as I can to make it as stable as possible. I'm gonna find the main branch of the plant which on this Cherokee purple is this one right here. Try to get it. You know what? I'm going to change the position of this state. I'm not going to like it if I put it right there. Already it's creating more space and making it easier for the plant to have some aeration. I'm not going to tie them tight. Up. 
So you can see already how putting the stake there has given this tomato more room around its lower branches and is holding it up much better. There is a lot of extra growth on this tomato that probably should be pruned off. Um, it's an indeterminate, so I may take some severe cuts. I'm just worried about if I go down and prune this leader down here at the ground, is that going to leave it open to disease? But there's a lot of pruning that needs to be done here around the bottom to give it more airflow and to keep the soil. As you can see, when the soil gets up on the leaves, it starts to cause disease and blight, and those really do need to be removed. So I'm gonna have to do some drastic pruning on many of these, but we'll worry about getting them staked first. This one here is particularly bad. It's the Valencia tomato and, wow. So overgrown, I'm worried about it breaking, honestly. So, grab a steak. I had to do some pretty drastic cuts with this one already. Um, as you can see here, this branch was just coming over and laying on the ground and there was nowhere to stake it up. And that's a pretty big cut to make. Look at it's the size of my fingertip, but it really had to be done. This tomato had already forked in the center and really has two main leaders. So I'm not exactly single stemming this plant. Um, this one I allowed to stay because I was able to train it up the trellis here. So it's coming up the trellis that I have my squash and things on. And I was able to stake the main leader all the way up. Just a quick little bit on tomato pruning. You have your, your leaf stem, you have your main stem, and then you have a sucker that will grow in the armpit of an indeterminate tomato and it will grow off and start basically a whole new plant. This here is not a sucker, this is your fruiting stem. So this little sucker here, I'm just gonna pull off. That won't hurt your tomato, it's just going to mean that it can put its energies into the fruit it's already putting on. What are we gonna do with this sucker? Follow me. I have a friend who wants some tomatoes. So we're gonna to try to get her some free tomatoes by putting these in a spot in the garden that I'm not using at the moment. I'll be sowing some lettuce and things here, but right now it's pretty uh, overgrown with weeds and things that bunnies have eaten. And the bunnies might eat these too, but these are all Valencia tomato suckers that I've pruned off and I stuck over here in the dirt Hopefully they'll set some roots. I can dig them up and then give them to my friend for her to put in her garden for a late fall harvest of tomatoes. This one here has really fallen over and gotten tangled in with everything else. It's a little tricky to pull it up. Oh, and we're also dealing with a squash vine that's made its way in. So that's some detangling. After. I'll fix that in a minute. But this is where the bunnies made their nest. I don't want to disturb the bunnies here, but also I need to stake this tomato, so they'll just have to be happy.
Then I'm gonna do one last tomato, this one here that's falling over. And again, we've got one that's split, and I'm not quite sure which is the main leader, which is the sucker, but I think I'm just gonna go with this one here. Black Beauty, Great White, Pink Brandy Wine, and this is potato leaf. I mean, any of them, honestly. Now, you don't want to twist tie these too tight. You want to have some give, some room for the plant to move with the wind, and so that the twist ties don't cut into the actual plant. There we go. I have time to stake up one more. Already, that looks a million times better. There is still a lot of pruning that needs to be done, but you can see how there's way better airflow going on in there now. Definitely a lot more order compared to the rest of the bed. I'm pretty excited. Hopefully I can get to the other half of the bed tomorrow. Once they're all staked up, we're gonna get those marigolds and things transplanted around the base. And I'm gonna probably throw in some basil seeds and just kind of let them go crazy. But we are gonna be in Tomato City before long, guys. Woohoo! Can't forget this bed over here, though. Not nearly as uh, runaway as the other one, but there's definitely some that need to be staked up ASAP in this bed. But we'll get there, we'll get there. Well guys, I've finished up just in the nick of time because now it is starting to rain and I have to get to work. So I've done what I could in that short amount of time. Glad you guys came along to see. If you liked this video, go ahead and give it a big thumbs up and click that subscribe button because man, I can't wait to show you all the tomatoes that are growing in here. There are 22 tomatoes in this bed, um, some multiples, but we've got 30 varieties of tomatoes between the two beds and I can't wait to taste test them with you and uh, do some funky crossing with them once we've got them all staked up and ready to go. So if you guys are interested in all that you want to see, you want to see my garden tours, my harvest videos, all that fun stuff that I have to share with you, go ahead, click that subscribe button and I'll see you in our next video while we grow more wicked awesome food from yard to table. Bye-bye.